So, Halir, what do you think is happening in these dating streets these days? <laughs> like, I honestly feel like we're living in the trenches. Like, that's a good question. I feel like um, most people at this stage of their life, where maybe because of past experiences and also because of you know this one Nigerian period, oh, mm-hmm. you're done with school, you have a good job. Mm-hmm. Parents subconsciously and having a few friends here and there that are settling down and all. So I feel like because of that, people are now so careful mm-hmm. to make a mistake. So most people are not really committing, like committing fully and do you breakfast culture. No one wants to be self breakfast. Which now. is so breakfast culture now? I do breakfast now. <laughs> Like we all see these things on social media and all of that yeah. now, but all, all like all jokes aside, so I feel like people are not really being themselves. People are not really committed. So mm-hmm. we are having many relationships where two people are going in with maybe 50, 60 percent of themselves, rather than going in freely and yeah, seeing what it leads to. And um, yeah, I think so because of that, there's been a lot of times where people date and say okay you know what this person is really not what i want and yeah especially now because i don't think anyone wants to waste their time definitely not me (laughs) definitely not the people i know so yeah i feel like that contributes to why relationships now is just more of in out buzzbos like but wait do you think people actually go into relationships without knowing if it's something that they want I don't think I don't know. Maybe from my own end, I just see it as not everybody goes into a relationship thinking that you know. Uh, I just want to for the fun of it. There are people that date for fun, like oh, I'm bored, or oh, I'm alone. I just don't. I want to have that. You know, I'm with somebody, and the people that intentionally go into it because they actually know what they're looking for. But now you're saying oh, family, um, what's it called, societal pressure, and then just being an adult and thinking that it's something that just happens because you feel like you're in that stage of your life. But do you really think people just go into it because they think it's something that they have to, not want to? Um, for the most part, I don't think people just go into relationship life. I think people genuinely go into relationships with the, for the best reasons, for the best of intentions. Mm-hmm. But I feel like maybe because of most of the things we see, I said, especially like mm-hmm. most of these like celebrity couples, the expectations they've put out there and all. So people are expecting perfection which is a problem because then you are going to a relationship with the best of intentions. But mm-hmm. then, because you're expecting perfection, any little thing to you is a red flag. I'm not saying they are not genuine red flags. Come on, like there are some things that you will see and you should be cautious or wary about. But there are some things that are so negligible. But because, like I said, people are going into these things without putting... Their mind they are full hundred percent. They are scared of oh, I can chop big fast too. What if I make a mistake? Or what mm-hmm. if this and that? So because of that, any little thing is to use a red flag. And <laughs> by the time there's an accumulation of little red flags, there's a big yeah. red flag. And so are you saying people should not look out for red flags? No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I think people should genuinely look out for red flags. Like look out for. I feel like everyone should have fundamentals. Like before mm-hmm. you get into a relationship, you should know what. You're and looking what for. You, yeah, you were looking for what you would tolerate, what you would not tolerate. tolerate. So if there are things that someone does and you know that, okay, this is something that I can gener- I can overlook. It's not really a big deal to me. Mm-hmm. Then by all means, it's not a big deal. I'm not saying that you should also sweep a lot of things under the carpet because I feel like that leads to a lot of resentment. So I feel like, but if there are things that to you, you know that these are issues, don't, because most times, yeah, I think when people talk about, oh, divorces, separation and all of that, I feel like, most things that lead to that are things that have been there from the beginning of the yeah, relationship. Yeah, but they did not pay attention. Exactly. Or they just allowed love blind them from those things. So mm-hmm. by all means, look for red flags. But what I'm saying is enjoy, allow yourself to enjoy the moment. You shouldn't because of... I think it even happens a lot in terms of general things in this generation that let's say, oh, posting each other on social media. I feel like that matter is an individual couple thing. Some people hmm. are expressive that way. Some people are not expressive. that way. But then you have people that want to post their partners, but they are not posting their partners because they are scared of, oh, what this person is doing 
something, something. I don't know. Like, come on, just <laughs> enjoy your relationship. That's what you want. If you don't want it, well, don't wait. do it. Okay, so about that, like, I, I honestly don't know what the main reason is, right? But from, I don't want to say personal experience, but even from people that I know, right? People feel like you can't tell what the other person is doing. So imagine posting a partner like, oh, yeah, this is the person I'm with. and every, Like, people will obviously be looking at you like, hmm. This one is posting this one. You don't know what this your girl or this your guy is doing behind your back. So nobody wants to be a subject to ridicule or like, you know, give people reasons to want to say something about you because they feel like I'm just being genuine. Like, you know, this is the person that I'm with and I'm not scared to show them off. But you don't know what's going on on the other end. So like you said, like people are not going in with their 100%. That might not be the case, but I honestly feel like if you're going into something and you're only sure of your own parts, like, I think it's just safer to just, nobody needs to know. Like, me personally, I'm very private with my personal relationships, whether I'm dating the person or not. So I don't think I need to show somebody off like this. Is, when it comes to friendships, yes, this person is my friend and all that. But if it's a partner, I don't think it's anybody's business, like, who I'm with. Why do you need to see the person that I'm dating or not dating or who I'm with or whatever? So, like, people also need to mind their business. Like, a lot of people are very invested in people's (laughs) relationships. Definitely. Some people might see that, oh, you're with this person and you look very okay, you're happy, you guys are having, like, a good thing. And then, mm -hmm, anything happens on these streets. True, but... Some people genuinely want to be like, oh, this one thinks that... I've seen people, Haliru, that will say, this guy is dating this girl and I'm going to prove to this girl that this guy can cheat on her. I'm going to prove to this girl that, you know, men are not always, I'm going to prove to this girl that I can get any guy I want, like, you get. So, like, people protect their personal interests. They protect, like, their privacies by not exactly putting all these things out there because you don't want to give people reasons to, like, you know, find ways to come into your personal space because they feel like yeah you actually introduced it to them and for the whole i don't know about the part of you know societal everybody is influenced but you think social media is a very influencing factor to why people go into relationships i would not say is uh, when it comes to getting into the relationship i wouldn't Mm -hmm. say is that much of a factor i think when social media becomes important or when it plays a big role is mainly mm-hmm. when you are in the relationship i think it creates a lot of expectations illusions like okay let's say this is late january early february vows is coming soon hmm. some people are started posting some people are some people's vows is the whole of february <laughs> first <laughs> second 2014 so they're yeah. posting this this and that and then you have your own individual relationship maybe oh your boyfriend may love you but things may not be as good for him at that moment Mm -hmm. but then i think it's human to want to at least have the good things of life and when you're seeing some people some celebs or whatever posting and posting and posting and posting it's normal and maybe on that day self your guy didn't even buy anything (laughs) Mm -hmm. i'm not saying we don't know why he didn't we don't anything could have happened but then i think it's normal to what's it called to allow that affect you so i think those are ways that social media i don't i think social media affects because in social on social media you can't really see the day-to-day of activities of, of a relationship couples. exactly yeah. what you are seeing is mainly birthdays anniversaries vacations vacations yeah. and all of that so on those days those are the days that i will see social media really tensions People. So you people. think people are influenced by all those things that they see, thinking that as a couple, because this is something that happens on this particular day, like, why shouldn't it happen to me? Yeah, I, I think so. I th- but I feel like also as couples, I think sometimes as couples, you have to look at both of you. You understand? Mm-hmm. You should know at a point what your partner likes, what your partner yeah. doesn't like. So there are some, there are some people now, I know people personally tell you they don't celebrate valentine's i was about to actually yeah that. So not like because there are people that actually say like oh all these things them. it's not a big deal like it doesn't prove or show whether i actually care or have affections towards you no, and no, whatever no. so like do you think it's really a deal or not a deal to like look at some of these 
Uh, should I call them celebrations that are being celebrated you know, but, regularly about couples or whatever? Like, does he actually say, what, regardless of what the situation might be, do you actually think like having somebody, like having a partner or someone you're in a relationship with, and then they don't acknowledge some of these very important, notable dates for couples? Like, do you think it plays a role in whatever relationship you have with someone? I feel like if it's something that... Um, you as a person or if it's something that someone likes like mm-hmm. uh, if there are some people who like they remember the littlest of details they probably do one week anniversary two months anniversary and all of that yeah. so if it's something that you like and you're, I feel like first of all yeah, if someone likes you even if it's not something that they're used to it's not something they normally do I feel like when people are in that relationship space they tend to compromise they tend to meet in the middle so yeah. if you're someone that likes gifts, you're someone that likes celebrations and all of that, your partner doesn't like it, you guys have to meet somewhere. You may, how I, I would say, okay, you can reduce some of your expectations, but your partner also has to show more mm-hmm. concern, like show more, uh, celebrate those things. So Just because of, you do. Yeah, meet in the middle. But so I think, are these the conversations that need to be had like in the beginning? So you know what you're getting yourself into. I feel like the problem we mainly have is that um, you can't 100% know someone. True. Especially like honeymoon stage, everyone is happy. Everyone, uh, you talk on the phone throughout the night, they are laughing. But when C finish starts entering, I'm not saying it's, it's well, not C finish. Can you give me an example of what C finish is? I, I will C finish in the sense that like you are not used to each other. You mm-hmm. understand? It's, it's natural. Those initial butterflies can't be there forever. That's why you see people tell you love shouldn't be the main reason you get married. You understand? Mm-hmm. So when then at that stage, that initial excitement is no longer there. Mm-hmm. That is when these things now tend to be issues. Problem. So See. someone that was not usually someone that likes to celebrate, he has now gone to his default setting. Then someone that is still expecting these things to be celebrated mm-hmm. is now like, why did this person stop? Before you know, it leads to um, trust issue because this person now feels like oh this person doesn't like me again this person may be doing these things with someone else so all of that but I feel like in all of this communication is key True. you have to talk to each other you have to sit down with your partner tell them what you want what your expectations are and be always open to criticism I feel yeah. like that's a major problem a lot of people feel like someone telling you where you can improve is a bad thing no we are learning every day you understand mm. So, so yeah. do you think that, I mean, when it comes to this whole learning and unlearning, like, is it okay, like, to outgrow certain, you know, interests, habits while in a relationship? Like, you can like certain things while you're, before you're actually with somebody. And then, you know, someone comes in, like, like you said, you get to know the person, you have seen each other and finish. And do you think <laughs> it's okay to now develop new interests of certain things that you like, that you feel like? they should be a part of you know whatever it is that you choose to do or like not necessarily like 100 percent, but that whole being supportive as a partner so is it okay because like you said now certain people just get into things without knowing what's in it and then over time you're now like okay this was not how it was before this person doesn't care anymore or whatever but when it comes to like being a human being, like you can't just be stuck with certain attributes. So do you actually think people can learn and unlearn and, you know, develop new habits while already in a relationship? And how should a partner deal with that? Okay, I feel like um, apart from debt and taxes, one of the most constant things in life is change. Mm-hmm. There's nobody that is the way they were today, uh, the way they were last year rather, the same people learn people life experiences shapes the way we behave yeah. you understand so it's normal for people to change so i i feel like little little change here and there may not really affect mm-hmm. a relationship per se i think i feel like most of the time when these kind of things happen is when okay maybe two very introverted people like each other they get in a relationship and all of that mm-hmm. and um They've been like that throughout. They don't really go out and all of that. Then suddenly, yeah. one so of them maybe changes job. He has new friends he has made in the office mm-hmm. that make him go out a lot more often. And then this person every weekend, every Friday night is going out. 
And, and the other one is used to just... Exactly, they will sit down, watch Netflix, you know eat pizza or something at mm-hmm. home. So I feel like those kind of things, is, is for your partner to understand that this, I don't know, it's for you, like I said, communication is key. You understand? Like if the partner understands that, okay, this is not something you are doing out of, I'm not use the word disrespect, but not that you're going to meet other people wherever. It's just you yeah. having fun and all of that. Then I feel like if you are able to bring it in a way that the other person understands, I don't see why they should have a problem, a problem with, with it. it. I feel like when the problem comes is when you're just doing your thing. You're not telling the person anything. Someone that, imagine someone that is used to you guys always spending your alone time every together. weekend together. Mm-hmm. Then suddenly every Friday, oh, I'm going out to the guys. I'm going out to the girls. Come on. It's human yeah. nature. So I don't, like I said, I don't think minor changes really impact a relationship that much. I feel like it's when, and there are some people also that will tell you, oh, I can't be with someone that's always oh. going out. And that is where issues What's the problem coming. with that? I'm not that kind of person, so I wouldn't know. Yeah. But I feel like, I don't know, some people, I don't know, some people, like you said, some people, like, maybe they feel, like, okay, the person is always out. That privacy in the relationship is no longer. But I don't think anyone going out has anything to do with their relationship. It doesn't. Yeah. It shouldn't. I think, to be honest, like, if I'm coming in here, I just think that if it comes to the whole wanting to be controlling over unnecessary things, it just has to do with insecurities. To be Correct. honest, because like from personal experience, I can tell you that there are certain people that I've spoken to before. Like I was not exactly in a relationship with them. But you know when you're talking to somebody, let me use talking stage for an example. And then somebody's trying to control everything that you do. Like I've spoken to a guy before and he boldly told me that, oh, I'm kind of jealous for the kind of network that you have. Red I flag. know you're, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Big one. <laughs> So I'm jealous that you know there are a lot of people that you get to talk to both guys and girls and I'm like okay like what am I supposed to say like what's supposed to be my response and then this one wants to be doing oh who are you talking to where are you going what event is that and I'm just like no this was even like when I was like much much younger so I think it's also important to know like what you truly want in a person because like you said, you actually like go into something with a mind, like with an open mind. And then so at the end goes. of the day, you see that, okay, this is not exactly what I want. So maybe like anyone that wants to genuinely go into something needs to be sure that this is what I can handle. This is what I can. Like right now, I think I know like what I can handle, what I can tolerate. Mm-hmm. But life always throws surprises. <laughs> yes, life always throws surprises. But you can't just be caught off guard like because I want to be with somebody or I want to be in a relationship. Like I'm supposed to just settle for whatever. Like you can't do that. I can't do that to myself personally because I know the kind of person that I am. Imagine okay personally i deal with a lot of anxiety like i get really stressed out sometimes i can be very i don't know how to explain it so imagine now being with someone that kind of like foils that i can't deal with it i have to be with somebody that is like strong-minded somebody that is more than i am that is emotionally mature Mature, and intelligent not somebody that wants to be I can put my phone on do not disturb because this person that I claim to be talking to wants to be calling me and be saying things that will be making me even scared. Why? I should feel the opposite when I am talking to somebody that oh, I yeah. see as a potential partner. Do you get? So I think it's very important for everybody to actually know what they can deal with and what they can't. And then talking about this whole dating and relationship thing, I don't know. For some people, there are two different things. So what do you think dating is and what is your relationship? Like being in a relationship and dating, are they the same or are they two different things? Mm, I feel like they are two different things. Okay. Oh, but I think the idea of dating, at least in the Western world, is more of is what we would refer to as talking stage. That is okay. someone that you've met, you guys are talking to each other, you guys are going out on dates, learning new things about each, each other. other. Like, and then relationship is when you people have now, after a few, after dating for a while, which will say talking for a while, you've mm-hmm. now said, okay, this is what I want. And you guys are sure. You so people, that's where the exclusive. That is when it is a relationship. Okay. So I think there are two different things. That's why you see people who say, I'm dating this person. Like they are dating, you can date more than how many people two people three people it doesn't mean Mm. you i'm not saying you're not committed to any of them is what like i'm sure if i if you i said someone was talking to two three people Mm -hmm. i don't think you'll see it as a big deal but what we refer to as dating in this part of the world is actually what 
talking stage. What we, yeah, what we refer to as talking. So they are two completely different, different things. Thing. I don't think when you are dating someone is to find out you guys compatibility, whether this do you guys suit each other, you guys will and be it's perfect. Something that exactly. you're willing to explore. Like yeah, that's like when you actually go exclusive, like okay, now I'm ready to just like put my eggs in this perspective. Yeah. So I don't think dating is not something that I don't think you should leave me. I'm like, life experience is very but I, I would feel like people should talk to as many people much as many people as possible you understand mm -hmm. meet as many diverse characters as possible so that you mm. know who you are who you whoever you're selling with you know okay you've met people and you know that okay this yeah. is someone that you know you mm -hmm. like that so that you know your stories you know a lot of times in nigeria you hear someone telling someone ah i wish i met you before i met my wife <laughs> those kind of stories you know so like meet everybody you can meet <laughs> God. So that when you meet your wife, you know Yo, your wife. That line, that's like that standard married men line. Like everybody knows that being with people and still wanting to know if you've actually met like a lot more people to decide that this is what you truly really want. So I think my question there is going to be: Do you advise or would do you think that even while forget dating, dating is just getting to know different people, right? While being in a relationship, do you think it's also necessary for you to still date other people? Because, like, obviously, going into a relationship is like this is exclusive, right? I've decided that okay, fine. Like, from all my dating, this is like the one person that I think I want to like really explore this with. So, would you advise, or do you think it's it's still necessary to still date? Like, maybe not hundred percent, but just still know that okay, I'm in a relationship. But like you said, anything can happen, right? <laughs> so, do you still think like it's okay to be open to dating other people, knowing someone else, or just like? I feel like um, different people answers will vary from person to person. Mm -hmm. Me personally, um, before I make the decision to be in a relationship with someone, mm -hmm. I would have thought about a lot of things. I would have considered every factor possible. I would have been in a situation where I know this is what I absolutely want to, who I absolutely yeah. want to be with. So me personally, when I'm in a relationship, I would not date someone else. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because that person is what I wanted. Uh, if, come on, if I was to keep dating people, there would never be an end. I would keep yeah, wanting to be different people all the time. So for me to make that decision that, okay, this is the person I want, I feel like at that juncture, I'm not saying you, I have friends here and there now, but in terms of looking romantic. for a romantic relationship with them, once I'm in a relationship, I feel like that's it. But then there are people of a different school of thought. Mm -hmm. You understand? Some people, don't want because maybe because of life experiences they've chopped breakfast and all of that so <laughs> is breakfast the only reason why people do that uh, i feel like why people mainly will even do that i don't think if your relationship is very good anyone would want to talk to any other person i feel like when this happens is when they are not happy in the relationship do you think so no, there obviously there are some people that just want to that just like the streets but i'm saying so you think no i don't <laughs> generally think so. Well, you can't judge. I wouldn't. I, a lot I of people have do different things for different reasons, right? But anyways, I think we should move the conversation a little. So like, this is just speaking in general terms, right? So what about in the workplace? Have you ever liked somebody that worked in the same office as you? Like, do you think that it's okay to actually, does it actually work dating people in the workspace? Not even necessarily being in a relationship now, just dating. Like having that, you know, like, work is like where you spend like half of your time so do you think it's necessary to consider dating people in the same workspace as you the same industry or whatever i feel like you can't really control who you like and who you love so if the person that your heart is drawing you towards mm -hmm. is someone in your office i don't think it's distracting in any way um me personally mm -hmm. if i'm talking personally i wouldn't date someone in my workplace. Why? i feel like you you you'll be in each other's sometimes one of the nicest things with i don't know like when we're little kids our fathers and mothers will go to work mm -hmm. when they come back that excitement of oh welcome how was your day and all of that like yeah. that excitement that excitement is there but i feel like when you're seeing each other every time even especially when you guys are maybe both mid-level or junior level um staffs office, at the office drama. yeah then you have a boss shouting at Mm -hmm. shouting at one of you I don't, I don't i don't i don't think it's something like i feel like even when you go home when you want to say oh this was how my day at the office went i just feel like when you are in each other's faces spaces every time mm -hmm. i feel like that excitement won't be there but i'm just saying that's talking, you that's me because there are people who 
like you said, there are people who always want to be around their partners. So to them, it's not a problem. They want to see them as often as possible. I don't think everybody wants to see their partner as often as possible. But what I mean is that they don't even want the other person to breathe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand? understand? So they want to always be there and there. And some people probably like it because at least maybe when you're going for office lunch, mm-hmm. you're going for office lunch together, you probably go to work together, go back home together. Professionally, you guys probably also learn together. Mm-hmm. So, so it really just depends on the individual and yeah. what they want. Personally, I don't, I don't think it's something true. that I'll ever consider, to be honest. I mean, like, I've had different instances where the opportunity presented itself, but it's just, it's not like a rule, like a standard rule for me, like, oh, I will never do this in my life, but it's just not something that I'm interested in. Like, I find it very distracting because I think when it comes to dating, like, I... I want to be myself totally. But when it comes to work, right, I'm like 100% corporate professional. I don't want anyone else in the office to see any aspect of me. I'm one of those people that once I get a job, all my colleagues, even my boss, like whatever, anybody that works with me, shy, first of all, you're blocked on all my social media. <laughs> if I save your number on my WhatsApp, I go and block you from viewing my story, even if I don't post anything. So I'm the kind of person that wants to like work is work, right? I don't want to give you like an avenue to know anything else that has to do with my personal life or social life or whatever. So I would never, I don't know. I don't know. Let me but not say life. something yeah, and then life, in the future. Life always but to be honest, us, it's so. never it's not something that I consider like, you know, being with somebody in the workspace because it works for people, by the way. I have a friend, like she was dating this guy, they were in the same office. It was a really small space, like five employees, two of them were dating for years nobody knew they got engaged they're getting married this year oh wow i'm telling even the the founder even till now the founder does not know because like obviously their colleagues are cooperating so when they found that everybody's just like helping them cover but they're like when it's time for wedding when cards are out they'll send it to their boss so like there are people that it works for and guess what that's not even the worst part they don't just work together. They live together and wow. go to work together, come back together, stay in the same house. And They're I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you get... So I think when it comes to this dating relationship thing, right? It's not a one size fit all. Like everybody... Definitely. Everybody and their story. Your story will always be different from another person's story. But I mean, like, I don't know. I think what I want to ask you now is why do people go into relationships? I know you, at the beginning of this conversation, you had said, you know, people think about how I finished school, you know, maybe this is like the stage of my life where I need to like start looking for who to spend my life with. Like maybe if you're thinking towards marriage, I know there are people that just date for fun. Like, yeah, I mean, amazing. I'm in the age where I should just like date different people. So why should I be alone? There are people that date because they need people to provide for them. I can tell you that, like, as a girl, like, there are people that be like, oh, no, any guy that I want to date has to be a guy that has money and is willing to spend and take care of my lifestyle. There are people that date because genuinely they just maybe, like, okay, I want to, like, grow with somebody, like, build a life with somebody, like, literally. So, like, for you, I don't, you don't need, like, need to literally talk about what it is for you but in general from what you've seen what do you think is the reason why these days like to be honest i cannot understand like what's happening in this scene on the, in this generation so what do you think is happening like why do people just do you think people just go into relationships for whatever reason because like you know it's something that they think is necessary for the season or they have like genuine intentions or whatever okay i think that's a very good one i feel like as human beings, mm-hmm. one of our core values is companionship. Mm. People want to feel loved. People yeah. want to be with someone that makes them feel makes them feel loved. Someone that can talk to. Someone they can express themselves to. Someone mm-hmm. they can be themselves with. So, and then yeah. there are people that are actually willing to settle just because, like, it's better for me to be here than not be anywhere else. Like, what do you have to? What do you have to say about people like no, that? I, I don't think she ever said to. It's not a do or She never said to for love. Yeah, I feel like these things naturally come. You mm-hmm. understand? And Whether you're some, looking I, for them or not. To make it clear, there are some people that are actually very okay with being with no with nobody. Mm-hmm. Their life, they like the way their life is. They do their thing. No one is in their space. Yeah, but at some point, like you can't deny that you have to start feeling that urge to be with somebody like you know share uh, your space me yeah but i i think i've met people i've met I, these days I, I have a lot of people who tell you you know what they don't you know, think okay. they ever want to 
that's what Get that's married. what they tell you do you know if that's how they truly feel because i, mean, I feel I like i don't go by what they're telling me exactly so the thing is like you said companionship is a big deal like it's a key mm-hmm. factor people are lonely people want to like be. especially like you know the, the old japa culture and everything and people everyone wants to unfortunately because of the situation of the country people want to mm-hmm travel out, get new opportunities. I think one of the first things anybody that has lived abroad would tell you is that it is lonely. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is lonely. Enough. You can come from work, come from school, whatever, and you are just there. Nobody. But guess what? There are still people that are in the same abroad that will still travel to Nigeria just to get married and go back. Yeah. So like I say, it's not... I try to live my life like by not exactly you know portraying what other people's stories are like yeah because if you follow what people say like you want to like somebody like me that i get easily anxious about stuff you want to now like start to picture yourself you know judging by what someone else has gone through but like it's never a one size fit all so i think Definitely. everyone just has their different stories like this thing that i just said now i've heard it too like there's so many people that oh yeah i traveled and this is what it is this is like the reality out there right and the people that will go there and they're traveling back to the country because they're coming with their partners to come get married and move back to their main base so you can never like judge it's just like when we're talking about social media and celebrities and whatever you'll be like admiring certain people like oh this is how this couple looks online but no, then one day it's yeah, yeah. just yeah, boss you just hear something and you just be like ah, ah these people that have you not seen how recently people will just be like ah that means i don't have hope again because if this thing can happen to these two people yeah. then what what can i do people the first things people will say like mm-hmm. look around the people look at the people around you i think yeah. i hear a lot of times about oh um these days marriages don't last um mm-hmm. people divorce and all of that I, I personally i don't think the rate of divorces is any much higher than it has always been been i mean back in the days you will see grandparents having living like those things happened but yeah, for what it is there was no is, social media back then exactly but for so what people it don't is, exactly know like what, what used happened. to happen but what is i always look at the people around me i think i have i have a few friends that have gotten married at least four or five years now and mm-hmm. at least from what we see they are yeah, all happy yeah okay so i mean i'm the only one person who if i told i've divorced so if i'm looking at out of five six people mm-hmm. five are together one yeah. is divorced of course i feel like <laughs> when and i hear people are saying oh the rate of divorce Plus but bad news is the one that is uh, and sadly that's what we because people in. actually like always talk about the one that is not doing well but the ones that are actually okay because seeing hollywood for example everybody's talking about how uh, these days celebrities are crashing here and there but look at the ones that have been there for, like, a has been right since forever. it's not supposed to be like exactly. perfect but i mean like I just always tell people don't judge or like live your life based on what someone else has experienced or like what other people have to say and see I still think that we're living in the trenches by the way like no this, but I feel like in this this, this dating <laughs> and marriage in this generation because back then I feel like our parents or our mothers like were very lenient like they were willing to like just some things will happen and they'll just be like oh i'm looking at the children or like you know this is the person providing for the family or i have nowhere else to go but i think the difference now is that now there's so many like females or even males that because at the end of the day it's not just about the women even men to go through like marriage abuse and certain things like that so i think the difference now is the same way i always Maybe not always, but I will support Gen Z's. The way people are always like, this Gen Z's. <laughs> I'm care. telling you, because somehow I kind of like understand why they do certain things that they do. But I think now, women are now more independent, strong-minded in the sense that in those days, Haliru, like a lot of our moms, not all of them were like, heading companies you know working jobs where they are like in top management like women were always seen to be suppressed like yeah your role is really in a home but now like you can see a lot of women running businesses doing things for themselves like independently paying their bills with or without you know having any support Anybody, yeah. so maybe that's i don't know if it's supposed to be an issue but a lot of guys see it as intimidating and i don't know why because i've seen different people that will tell you oh this one thinks she's independent, so she will not be... This one cannot be submissive in marriage. Like, why is that the mentality with men? Like, as a guy, like, why do you think that's something that a guy will see and feel intimidated about or think that because this person has something going for herself or because, you know, she seems to have it all figured out? 
at the end of the day, like you don't even know. She might not even have it figured out, but that's just you assuming and then is intimidating you because why you want to control. You always with men, like I think the first instinct is control. They just always think that, no, oh, yeah. Correct, no, I, 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 maybe point. I'm wrong, but I'm just saying, like, a lot of men, that's really their first instinct. Like, insecure men, I'll say. That's, not just any men. Use, yeah. But yeah, like, what do you actually have to say about that? Because, Omar, oh, it's, it's really not a one-size-fits-all. Like, everyone <laughs> is just winging it and just hoping that their case is, you know, it's different. good. Yeah. I feel like um, the word you used is actually the correct definition. The, the correct, um, yeah insecurity mm-hmm. because i feel like if you are with someone i think you should want the best for them exactly. so i would not see why i i think personally i know someone who is he doesn't deliberately does not want his wife to get a job like <laughs> he doesn't make it obvious but he's not pulling his not be, if you if you wanted her to get a job he could mm-hmm. get her a job but then he's not even pulling his weight because he doesn't want that to work and why what's the reason for exactly. that like why would you know in this economy say why don't you men should like look at women to be their partner like support system so it, why would you not want to be with some plus if you meet me and you see me as a goal driven person like you know the way i was when you met me so why, why would you, you want, want to change, change me because exactly. it, it actually falls into your ego that's the problem unfortunately i think uh, maybe as guys we look at we've been brought up to look at relationship marriage and all of this as a battle of superiority and it shouldn't be that way <laughs> that's why it's called a partnership you understand mm-hmm. but yeah, so people don't see it as partnership. it's something that both of you are meant to try your best work to get work hard together do the yeah. best for yourselves your kids and all of that but then wrongly society has made it look more of oh you must be in charge of the home. And mm-hmm. when they say people are in I mean, charge of the home, I don't think it stops you from being in charge of the home. Like uh, Whatever in charge of the home means. Exactly. <laughs> nobody is even taking your, what's it called, your position or role as, like they say, head of the home or whatever. But some men are just so insecure. Like they just feel like because this one has it all going for herself, she's not going to listen to me when I speak. I think there's, there's someone I know. Is he, I think he's not educated. Yeah, like he's, He didn't go to uni like, mm-hmm. up to high school level. Then his wife, she read LLB. Then mm-hmm. they got married like when she graduated from uni. Do you know, mm-hmm. he never allowed her to go to law school. It was like, she can't be a lawyer. Because of what? Because he's not educated. So he's <laughs> like, he's like, imagine someone whose appearance trained, yeah, trained her oh, up true. with the dream of oh, my daughter will be a lawyer. And, and she then, really did not go to the law school. That's cause fight. So the other that she, I just realized that, you know what? My husband doesn't want me to go to law school. And so wait, I have a question. So if he's not educated, what does he do? Like, is he actually okay to provide for the family? If yeah, she's not he's a lawyer, very, he's like, very okay. what exactly is she doing? He's very okay. In terms of finances, I think they are both very okay. She's doing well for herself. He's doing well for himself. He runs a lot of businesses. So just her going to law school and actually like just, achieving like said, that career and just for herself was his for him. problem. His wife is a lawyer. Then what did you do? Nothing. And I don't really, like, I, I don't know, like, I can't talk for everybody. I can't hold brief for everybody. But mm-hmm. I just feel like if you love someone, you should want the absolute best for them. Yeah, be allow career-wise, business-wise. Let them use the absolute pinnacle of whatever they want, they to, want do. to do. And you should give them that enabling environment. You support them towards achieving yeah. their dreams. I, 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 I really don't see how him, his wife being a lawyer, would not change the dynamics of mm-hmm. their marriage. I don't see how that would, I mean, they would be disrespect or whatever his fears are so uh, all this because i know some people that will tell you oh they don't want a woman that is so ambitious that is so why career like, and what's I, look wrong at my, with that? I look at my parents my parents are two career people and they had a very at least from what i saw it was mm-hmm. very blissful marriage there was never any reason to say oh because my mom is this and that that's changed everything and i've yeah. seen people who got married to illiterate and even the illiterate showed them pepe so <laughs> those things don't like hey, they don't really determine anything so i don't i really don't see the reason why you should restrict someone you claim to love from doing mm-hmm. what they enjoy because of doing. your insecurity yeah. or what you think because i don't know i don't think it even causes any damage if not for anything i've seen people that their partners like just even allowing your partner to just you know upscale and just reach the pinnacle of whatever they want to do has even created opportunities for you as a person exactly. because at the end of the day i'm more about partnership like growth like growing together yeah, like yeah. if i'm doing something and you're there to support me like when it's your turn i should be there to do the same and you know encourage you to pursue whatever dreams you have but the thing is 
I really don't know. So I think what I will ask you, like this has actually been quite an interesting conversation, but Same to round it up, I will say like, okay, so looking at how things are right now and how people are just like having mixed feelings about this entire, um, what's it called, dating and relationship thing. Like what advice would you give anybody out there that still genuinely wants to like, you know, explore this? Because see, I've spoken to different people, like not exactly personally, but now there are people that are telling you you know what i don't even care anymore mm-hmm. i think no, i just no, want to like get to a stage <laughs> i just want to make money now yeah, yeah. then when i get to a certain level i'll just like you know get pregnant for somebody have a child she needs to make money oh, and have I, children oh, some people are not exactly even interested in that whole oh. being with somebody like getting married anymore and i don't think i want to get to that aspect of my life one of my uncles used to tell me you they always you have he used to see me as well you are very stubborn you're so ambitious for your age there's certain things i want to do and i'll be telling my mom maybe he's there and he'll be like why do you want to do that can't you wait till you get married so your husband <laughs> will do it for you i'm like i don't understand how this stops me from you know do you know if the person i want to marry probably has his own plans and like i'm supposed to also encourage so the thing is there are people that are out there and they don't even consider marriage anymore they don't i'm not saying marriage is like the it's not, be, it's not, the it's big not a big deal yeah. right it's not like the key but i'm just right, saying it's a big deal, but the it's entire not the, the entire process <laughs> of like wanting to just be with somebody like you say companionship because at some point you want to just you know i want to have my own person it doesn't matter like what stage you get to in life right so i think that there are people out there that are still confused they are still like you know what this is what i've seen both on social media plus people around me i have a friend i used to say i bet waiting did this marriage like all the people that i know that are married where's the marriage now this one's that one bumpy king here bumpy king here that one that one. waiting <laughs> they are for now do you understand like why should i subject myself to that some people are like god forbid i've grown to a certain level in my life so why would i want to like allow one man or one woman to come like you know and just destroy this i can't remember which of my male friends but there's somebody that i asked before like see how hard working you are like where you've gotten to in your life you really want to be with somebody that will now bring you down because it's not just about men no. women too yeah. there are some women that you'll be with that they will drag you from 100 down I think, to I think zero both ways. your partner helps it's, a lot it's yeah. like instead of saying men are scum women can be trash too like it's not Definitely. even just like on one side of it so there are people out there that are still Eh, I don't know. I beg. Marriage is not my key. I want to make money. Last class, I could just bump it came for one man. We get money. I will take care of the child and I'll be okay. I have money to take care of my boy. I don't think that should be the case. So what would you tell someone that is still out there in the middle trying to just, you know, know what they should do or just figure out what, based on like social media, personal experiences, like what they've seen, like what would be your advice to somebody out there that is still like hopeful about having a successful like companionship with somebody okay i feel like the first thing first is you know they always say this before you can love someone you have to love yourself Mm -hmm. (laughs) so you have to love yourself you have to be in a good place for yourself both mentally career wise and everything Mm -hmm. you have to build an enabling enabling environment to welcome someone welcome someone into your life because if things are not doing good for you of course, if someone comes, you drive the person away. So you have to, on your own self, you have to be good. Mm-hmm. Then when it comes to people, I feel like we you need to know, have, I'm not saying you should, it's, it's not mechanical. You're not going to write a checklist and say someone must fit into, yeah. but you have to have an idea of what you want. You understand? People so that, be because that. the worst, the worst thing I always tell people, never settle. Mm-hmm. Anything, because this guy, like you said, this can, you can be with the wrong partner and it can drag you from, 100 to zero so yeah. you have to and people always think about different things when they want to settle like oh i don't want to be alone or and hmm. I, I think in my younger years like this is like me being 100 honest like in my younger years i think one of my fears used to be like starting over so you know when you've taken time to actually get to know someone because all my previous relationships have been like i've been with this person for like years like i think the list was like two three years so you're always like caught with the starting all over again meeting somebody again like starting the whole getting to know each other like so that used to be my problem but now obviously like i think i've met people like after that have shown me that you know what this is your fear of after this you might not find someone better there's always going to be somebody better better, like it has made me just like open my mind to know that if something is not good for you it's not good for you you don't need to worry about what happens next but just it will come like it will just align so yes i agree with the whole never settling but people are always like scared about Mm -hmm. 
different things, age, you know, situations, sure. availability, and just all of that. But that settling thing. And mm. then when people are now saying, oh, I don't want to settle, there's now that pressure of you're forming uh, what's it called? What you're looking for might not come. No, you always say so. I feel like one thing I'm always, I always tell people that our advice, uh, mm-hmm. I feel like relationships, I think people need to understand that a relationship or a marriage is not working out. We all hope for the best. We all want the best. But yeah. it is not the end of the world. I think people should go into Because no matter, even if a relationship doesn't, doesn't end where you guys break up, whatever way the relationship ended, you are going to learn lessons from that relationship that yeah, is going that will to help you, help you in your future relationship. So I mm-hmm. I think people should, I'm not, I'm not, wish for the best, hope for the best. But even when it doesn't work out, look at it as a learning curve, something that would shape you to meet a better person, that would be a better person mm-hmm. yourself. So you know what to do and what exactly. not to do. Exactly. So it's not really the one. end of the world if a relationship doesn't work out. So that's why it, it all goes back. No, people shouldn't put pressure on themselves. Like, I feel like I genuinely feel there's still a lot of love out there. Mm-hmm. I feel like everyone eventually will find, if as far as that what you want, you'll find yeah. your person. So take it, it easy. doesn't matter how long it takes. Take it easy. Do your thing. Meet people. Go get as much fun as you can, especially when you're young. Because like you said, when you said, oh, the fear of starting all over, it's better to start all over a hundred times and to be unhappy for the rest of your life. So True. take it easy. <laughs> the right person will come. Wow. All right. Thank you guys for listening. And I'm sure this this was really long, like <laughs> way, <laughs> way longer than I thought. And thank you guys if you listened this far. And thank you, Haliru, for coming and sharing your insights on this. And I hope to see you guys on the next one. Thank you. Thank you.